The tradition of the primacy of the rule of law in America is strong. It is in those simple facts and in our acts we will move forward toward making America safe again. God bless you and may God continue to bless these United States of America. We have a number of people to talk to, a number of people who have been very patient standing by waiting for us. Uh, our friend Tava Smiley from PBS, of the show that bears his name, author of uh, 18 books, uh, radio talk show host Hugh Hewitt, and uh, our own Joy Reid. They're all waiting to talk to us. So one at a time, Tavis, beginning with you, what do you make of this gathering thus far? And what do you make of uh, what the sheriff had to say? First of all, Brian, it's good to be on with you again. I will never forget for as long as I live being with you eight nights ago when you were on the anchor desk when this election was called for Barack Obama. So it's good to be on with you again uh, so many years later. Um, to your question, though, it is always easy to find these sort of political sycophants who are willing to stand up and advance these sort of simple slogans and rosy rhetoric, but can't get to a real conversation about what's at stake here. What's at stake here is not just the lives of cops, and there's no one in the country who doesn't believe that blue lives matter. Indeed, they do. The question is, when do we get around to appreciating, to valuing the sanctity, the humanity, and the dignity of black life? That's what's at stake. That's why Black Lives Matter is in the streets protesting. I think protest has its place. And when I hear the sheriff uh, refer to the Black Lives Matter movement as anarchy, first of all, I don't think that's the case. But if it is the case, I think the Boston Tea Party could be called anarchy, but we wouldn't be here without it. And so I believe that at, at our best, uh, America embraces the notion of peaceful, nonviolent protest. That's what Black Lives Matter has been all about. And we got to have a real conversation about whether or not and when we're going to get around to appreciating and respecting the lives of all fellow citizens. Tavis, do you think the movement uh, has made any mistakes with its tactics or messaging? I don't know any movement that hasn't. But by the same token, Brian, I don't think that well-behaved people get anything done. Uh, and so we can critique, we can Monday morning quarterback what their tactics and strategies have been. But I believe that somebody has to stand up with courage and conviction and commitment uh, to try to make this republic what it ought to be. And I believe that the, the, the best among us uh, offer their service to the rest among us. And that would include cops and for that matter, protesters as well. Tavis, in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement now becoming such a touchstone in this mm -hmm. election, I was just looking at remarks that um, candidate Donald Trump made even tonight as he was phoning into a different cable news network, kind of stepping on the program of his own convention, but he wanted to get on the air mm -hmm. and, and cover up people who were speaking on his behalf so he could throw mo more barbs at Black Lives Matter. Uh, you saw the way that uh, the Sheriff Clark there, uh, the rest of his remarks were received sort of I think tacitly by the crowd, but when he came out and screamed blue lives matter at the very beginning, uh, the reason he had to raise his voice was to overcome the audience and the standing ovation. What, what do you make of how much of a flashpoint that movement has, has become on the right? In a word, Rachel, brilliant question. It's, it's scapegoating. That's what it is. It's scapegoating. And that's what happens when you don't want to address the issue uh, that's at stake. Uh, again, I repeat, it's about the humanity and the dignity and the sanctity of black life. And it happens at all levels of government uh, and politics. It's, it's not just Republicans who are wrong about this. I've been on the record saying that the president hasn't handled this in the best way that he could. It's one thing to call the cop killers, and, 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 and certainly in, in Baton Rouge and, and, and Dallas, these African-American cop killers, vicious and despicable and cowardly and reprehensible, but we don't reserve that kind of language for killer cops. And so it's not either or, it's both and. If all lives matter, then cops have to respect citizens and citizens have to respect cops, and we can't scapegoat a particular set of protesters who are trying to get us to respect, to revel in the humanity of all of our people. Tavis, if I appointed you president, and if you still refuse to run, <laughs> we're just gonna have to appoint you. What would you do to fix what ails us right now? Because some days, especially in our business, it, it looks pretty bleak. Yep, it's a great question, Brian. Um, uh, I don't know that that would ever happen, number one, but it's funny to consider. But I think the ultimate answer is that we are lacking the kind of moral leadership 
that we need to address a moral issue. It troubles me, Brian and Rachel, that we keep looking at this issue, this this issue of distrust between cops and citizens. We keep looking at it and treating it as a political issue. And as a result, it gets kicked around like a political football. And then we trot out these people of color. I think I heard my friend Eugene Robinson suggest earlier tonight, and he's right, that you end up with more diversity on the stage than in the hall. We're playing a game here. What we're lacking here is moral leadership and we're lacking truth. In this conversation, if America is going to be made better, if we're going to learn anything from this moment, these lessons are trying to teach us, we have to have some truth in the conversation. And the truth is that black life in this country does not as yet have the same value as white life in this country. And the sooner we figure that out, the better we can get to becoming the nation that we ought to be. My old friend Tavis Smiley, who through his modesty failed to say how much he uh, contributed to our coverage of electoral politics over the years. Tavis, good to see you. Thank you very much for being a part of our coverage tonight. Thank you, Brian and Rachel. Appreciate it. We will uh, take a break as promised.